Yep. So now we're gonna move on to the albums. Time for albums. It's time yeah, for yeah. albums. We're gonna start with alternative album of the year. Now we always have to clarify. Mm -hmm. when we say alternative album of the year. We don't mean alternative as the music genre. We say that because typically on this podcast we analyze R and B albums and rap albums, hip hop albums, blah blah blah. And, but we have a whole separate category of albums that each of us listen to throughout the year that we just can't fit into that bracket or bubble of hip hop or R and B. And so we create this category, ultimate album of the year. And so with ultimate album of the year, it's all of those albums that don't fit into the category of R and B hip hop. That could be Afrobeats. It could be pop. If Raheem's bag was big enough, it would be country because I'd be talking to you about Chris Stapleton. <laughs> it could be cover albums. T Pain could have been here. Man, man. T Pain could have been here. He was man. on top of the covers. Um, could be cover albums, could be Japanese jazz, Japanese pop, J pop. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Next year, we're going into our K pop bag. I'm letting you know now. Next you know year, I'm already, I have my plans we'll for next be in year. Already, BTS man. bag. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> um, these are the nominees for alternative album of the year. The alternative album of the year nominees go as such Don Tolliver, Love Sick, Amare, Fountain Baby, Lil Yadi, Let's Start Here, Teaser Touchdown, How Do You Sleep at Night, and JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown, Scaring the Hose. And the winner for the alternative album of the year award 2023 goes to JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown scaring the hose. This was a tough one. This was a tough one. In the year where Don Tolliver's Love Sick was my most listened to album, in the year where we had to have a call and say, Raheem, Paul, we need to do an emergency episode for Lil Yachty, let's start here. In the year where Tito Touchdown is on his third nomination, JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown we're not, not we're not gonna lose this award, I'll be honest with you. Um what Scaring the Hose did for pretty much the entire year was different. It was different. Um it's funny because we never actually came in and did an official review for Scaring the Hose. I was so ready, Paul. I was gonna kill I was gonna kill him. I was gonna kill him because I was gonna come in and I was gonna say this album is literally two drums two drums on each song away from being complete, utter noise and not being listenable at all. For them to tread that line and make an enjoyable experience with how just out there this music is, how out there it is from song number one, is, is a masterclass. It's genuinely a masterclass. Um, I have to give them both their respect and their props for being able to pull off this album because... As I said, this album is so close to being noise and for it to not be noise and in fact be an album that can be listened to from when it released to the end of the year to into 2024 and still go off the way it does for me is saying something. It's saying something, man. Scaring the Hose is it's just not, it's one of those. It's one of those, man. Shout out to JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. Yeah, for real. I mean, it's not noise, it's organized noise. Mm. Shout out mm. to organized noise. For real. Um, this, you know, as you're reading the nominees, though, something just dawned on me. And, and you know, we, we, I have talked about the malaise and the molasses that was on the rap game this year. Mm -hmm. And you look at the nominees there. You got Don Tolliver, Lil Yai, JP Mafia, Danny Brown. Mm -hmm. Three out, three, four artists with three albums who, traditionally we would sit in the rap thing yeah you couldn't put them in that mm -hmm. it would be a disservice to really put them in that but um they have to be considered alternative albums mm -hmm. realistically right mm -hmm. and you think about the way in which rap has branched out in recent years and definitely in this past year 2023 i think that maybe contributes to the difficulties and qualities we were potentially seeing in the rap game mm -hmm. uh, that just dawned on me now this was a tough list. This yeah. was a tough list. There's so many albums and artists that could have been here that didn't make it. Emotional Oranges could have made it here. Mm -hmm. um, Line of Dark Ray could have made it here. Like, mm -hmm. There's so many different artists and so many different genres of music. Addict in the Gold, Ash AK, <laughs> Davido in a different world. Like, there's so many different artists. Um, but I think these five and these five projects specifically, um, they really 
they shifted landscapes. Mm. Mm. Like, they shifted landscapes. Like one of the albums I listened to this year in my personal aspiration to listen to more music outside of our typical was Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Mm -hmm. um, it was 50 years of that album this year, actually. And I remember like I was driving home one day and obviously I live right by Manchester Arena and they were having like a big billboard saying 50 years of this album, like mm -hmm. the likes album out now. I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll go listen to it. And I listened to it and um, I did some Twitter research on it mm -hmm. and I saw a tweet that came out and it said that Little Yachty, his change in sound was heavily influenced by Pink Floyd. And as yeah. soon as I plugged in that album, mm -hmm. plugged in that album, <laughs> listen to it. <laughs> as soon as I plugged in that album, I was like, this sounds like that's not it. Right. Fair. I can see exactly where Yari's pulled from mm -hmm. to create what he created mm -hmm. and why it sounds so genreless. Fair. 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 And that's just a testament to Yachty's artistry. Mm. Don Tolliver, my favorite song off that album was Embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Your favorite song of that album was For Me. Easily. So you're looking at two completely, like he stole a Beanie Man song yep. for For Me. Yep. And on Embarrassed, mm -hmm. it's him and Travis Scott doing what him and Travis Scott do. Yep. I could have talked to you about Private Landing, where Man. Bugatti Beebs was back doing Man. Bugatti Beebs dance. Man. <laughs> Fountain Baby by Amare. Wow. Raheem, she wow. sampled the clips. Wow. Womp, womp, what a dude. Wow. wow. <laughs> Yo, I Amare is. I was walking home from the gym. Mm -hmm. I had that album plugged in because I've been listening to it in the gym. I was yep. walking home with it. And that beat started. And I was like, I don't I remember queuing up clips. <laughs> and then it played. And I heard her voice come in. I have messaged you immediately. Right. I said, like, have you listened to Samari album? <laughs> you were like, no, not yet. I was like, listen to the Samari album. <laughs> she sampled the clips. <laughs> and I need to make sure I'm not going crazy. Yeah. Because there's people I know who have listened to this album. They won't know that she sampled the clips. So I need you to go and listen <laughs> and confirm to me that she sampled the clips. Um, that was phenomenal. It was just a great year. It was, it was a really year. It really was a great year, and mm. huge congratulations to Danny Brown and JPEG Marcus. Scaring the hose was exactly what I wanted it to be, exactly what I needed it to be. The hose was scared, man. and that's all I can ask for. Man, man the hose was scared, and I was not apologizing. I was for not it. apologizing for it. We need our men only spaces, man. <laughs> that's crazy. We have so many men only spaces. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> all these women want is a space. Like, we, have so men many, we have so many men only spaces. <laughs> <laughs> Greed will kill us. Like, we have the whole corporate border for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a little sexism joke. <laughs> um, congratulations to those two. And we move on to R and B album of the year. This was yep. this was tough. This was a tough one. This was a tough one. Mm. This, was this tough. was there was some debate needed. This was some debate needed. There was some debate needed. Like we always, like we've already said, it was a fantastic year in R and B. Um, there were some really great artists who did some really great things and dropped some really great projects. Um, there were so many more that could have, some of you will argue probably should have mm -hmm. made the final five, but this ain't your fucking podcast. Uh, <laughs> these are the nominees for the Two Stop Nigerians R&B album of the year. The nominees for the Two Stop Nigerians R&B album of the year go as such. Sampha Lahai. Adi Oasis, Lotus Glow, Q, Soul Present, Janelle Monae, The Age of Pleasure, and Coco Jones, What I Didn't Tell You. And the R&B Album of the Year 2023 award goes to Janelle Monae, The Age of Pleasure. Now, as you said, this was a tough, tough category. But the one thing that I think we both came in agreeing on was that Janelle Monet, The Age of Pleasure, was probably the winner for this category. The real struggle came in, okay, but who are the nominees going to be? Five, yeah. <laughs> because we matched on so many different albums and we just had them ranked in different places. So, ah, who's making the cut? Who's not making the cut? Damn. Um, man, Janelle Monet, I won't speak too much on it because we've already gone into a lot on what Janelle Monae did this year, but the age of pleasure, um, what I will say, man, my journey with this album, I was very late to it. Um, I saw the rollout, I was like, wow, when this album comes out, 
I listened to it, didn't listen to it for months and months and months. Got to the, near enough the end of the year and thought to myself, man, I know two Stub Nigerians Awards is coming up soon and I still haven't listened to it and it's been nominated for a Grammy. Let me finally just listen to this album and see what's happening. <laughs> listen to the album and all I could do was kick myself for not listening to it sooner because it's an album that realistically should have been playing the whole time through the summer. Um, and that's my fault. That's my fault. I won't blame anyone else. Um, it's an album that I should have just been onto immediately because it is the most pleasurable experience in music that I've had this year, man. Um, man, man, no skips, just a great, great, fantastic album in a year where R&B was really on show. It was on show. Everyone was going crazy this year, man. I mean, look at the nominees that we ended up narrowing down to. Q Soul Present, I've already said, elite, elite album, one of my most listened to albums this year. Samford La High. Samford doesn't miss. Samford won't miss. And he wasn't going to miss with La High. This album here is special, special, special. Adi Oasis is an artist that I didn't even know about for real. But I said, Paul, before we get to the two sub Nigerian nominees, are there any albums that you could see yourself nominating that you think I haven't listened to? It was on the list. I said, let me give it a listen. And it was hard for me to leave it because it was just that damn good, man. My God. My God. Adi Oasis. Yep. Yep. Tick. Nominated. Easy. Coco Jones. Listen, we knew that we liked her. We knew, we said, yep, there's something about her. It's special. All these features will keep on going off. We both went and listened to her album. We both came back and said, yep, the album's great. The album's great. Um, and as such, it's now nominated. It's, it's been a good year in music, man. It's been a great year. And again, mm. you look at the people who didn't make it here, whether it was Rory with I Thought It'd Be Different, yep. Georgia Smith with Falling or Flying, um, Byrie with To Hold Your Own Bro. Mm. Mm. Yana Lede. Um, there are so many different names that could have been here. Brent. No. Like, no. It's, it's a cold day in hell mm. where Brent Fires drops an album and he's not nominated for two storm Nigerian Awards. Crazy. You know Crazy. That might be the first time that's ever happened. Probably is. <laughs> um, but that speaks to the quality of a project that we had this year. You look at whether it's Janelle or Adi Oasis and the way in which they both um, in their separate fields, were able to combine funk and mm. jazz into their R and B with their songwriting, with their song making, um, which is phenomenal. Whether it's Coco Jones giving us a more traditional American R and B album and mm. vocals on tilt, mm. songwriting on one hundred. We talk about ICU, man. Intensive care unit, no. but also ICU. Man, but man, without your love, I will end up in the ICU. Listen, that's how you get me. That's how you get me. That's wordplay. That's wordplay. Because it's going to be, bro, if I, crazy. Anyway, I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> and then I came into this year, and there are many things I wanted mm -hmm. in music. I wanted to record them. Yep. I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. That was my proper tradition. I didn't get it. Um, but one of the things I really wanted desperately, more than anything in this world, mm -hmm. was a sound for up. Facts. Facts. I've been waiting since 2017. I was in second year. I'll go as far as to say, ever since I heard 4422. Yeah. I've only like wanted time for albums. Even though that was second year. Mm. Like, I was in second year when his last album came out, when Process came out. Crazy. I was in second year when 4422 came out. Mm. And I am now 26 years old. Man. And he dropped the album. This is the thing about SoundCloud. To quote a, a famous poet, Mm -hmm. He's not always there when you call. Mm. He's always on time. Man. Close quote. <laughs> shout out to Ashanti. No, for real. For real. What a poet. But shout out to Ashanti. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a phenomenal year RB. It really mm. was. There were some really great albums. And even more that we can't even mention here today. Um again, you'll probably have your own favorite RB albums that maybe we didn't mention here today. That's okay, you know. That's that's the beauty of this genre, is that there's something for everyone. And there's so much out there, so much army to consume. There's so much um, emotion out there, and it's just brilliant. But there's so much emotion out there, and it's just so great to hear. Mm -hmm. And again, just to see what these artists were able to do and where they were able to take the genre was beautiful. It mm -hmm. really was.
was. It really was a, a beautiful thing to see. Mm. Um, but congratulations to Janamane. Yep. Second victory today. For real. Might be seeing a later on. Mm. And now we got to wrap up with you. Yep. Yep. Get straight into it. Yep. Okay. So the rap album of the year nominees go as such West Side Gun, and then you pray for me, Cam Thomas, Red Shirt, Sky Zoo, and the other guys, The Mind of a Saint, Killer Mike, Michael, and Larry June, The Great Escape. And the winner for the rap album of the year 2023 goes to Killer Mike, Michael. Um, this was a special album. You know, you've already mentioned it, but I'm going to double down on what you've mentioned earlier. This was a very, very special album. Similar to my experience with Janelle Monet, where I went to it late, went to it very late. Um, I went to this album and I was kicking myself for not going to it sooner. Um, what Killer Mike did with Michael was nothing short of special. Uh, the range of emotions he takes you through listening to this album is nothing short of just extremely touching um extremely exciting is is a special special occasion when someone's able to do what killer mike did with michael um i say all of that this wasn't an easy category throughout the rest of this um killer mike michael stamped but man 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 cam thomas did something special with red shirt there's something extremely special with red shirt and I say that as someone who spoke to Cam Thomas, both of us got to speak to Cam Thomas um, after he made this album, got to pick his brain about what was going through his mind with this album, um, went to the pre-release for the album, went, listened to the album before most people got a chance to listen to the album. So we've had longer to live with the album than most other people. And even then this album lived for me um, throughout, throughout. Um, Sky Zoo and the other guys was one of the first albums we reviewed this, this year. And it's an album that at the time of reviewing it, I remember saying, ah, yes, yeah, pretty damn good. It's only going better for me. Only going better for me as time goes on, as the series of um, Snowfall ended. And I got to add even more context to the things that Sky Zoo were getting into with this one album. It just made everything way more special. Um, for him to do what he did to rap in the perspective of Franklin Saint from this well-known TV show, but at the same time keep it authentic to the skies that I've grown to know, I, is a masterpiece. Is a masterpiece. Is a masterclass in rap. Um, so shout out to Sky Zoo and the other guys because that was a very special album that dropped this year. And Larry June, who has already won a rap a rap artist of the year um, with the Great Escape. Special album, special album, man. Put me on to, put me on to features that I didn't know I would love, um, but I do now love, 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 love. Um, carried on with that iconic Larry June sound at this point. Um, it was just a special album, man. And th these were albums this year that I think they were just a cut above. They were cut above. And even that being said, the albums here that could have been nominated that just won. You know, Split Decision wasn't nominated, but that was a great album. Um, Call Me If You Get Lost, The Estate Cell wasn't nominated, but that was my most listened to package of the year. Beautiful and Brutal Yard by Jay Huss wasn't nominated. Um, there's just a lot that wasn't nominated. This was a good, these were some of the good albums in a year that wasn't necessarily the best in hip hop or in rap. These are albums that I think they were good albums. They were really, really good albums. They lived and they did enough to make it not the worst ever year for me. Yeah, no, I think, um, like I said, I've already lamented the state of hip hop this year, so I'm going to shine some love instead. Um, I think with these albums, they're really to rise above the negativity that was going on in the game, especially in a year with really big artists shopping. Mm. Like really big artists, mm. shopping. like Dre dropped an album this year. Yep, Travis Scott dropped an album this year. Yep, Young Thug dropped an album this year. Yep, these are really big hip hop names. They didn't make this list, and rightfully so, quite frankly. And these, some of these names aren't of that level. 
mm. in terms of superstardom. But the quality of the work will always shine through. Mm. Will always shine through. And I think that was clear this year, whether it was the great escape, whereas Westside Gun coming and saving rap like he does pretty much every year. <laughs> and then you pray for me, getting rappers who I had heard in 2023 mm-hmm. not rap well to rap at their best. Mm-hmm. How he does it. I don't know. I don't. Thank you, me. fly god. <laughs> um, but that's who us our gun is. Um, Sky's doing the other guys and a project which we started the year with. And it's typically hard when you drop an album in January, February time mm-hmm. to still be in contention towards the end of the year. But it did just get better every single time I listened to it. I listened to it a lot. And the messages were still so poignant. The story was still so relevant before mm-hmm. and after the final season of snowfall those of you who don't know sky soon the other guys the mind of saying is wrapped from the perspective of franklin state franklin saint from the show snowfall um you can catch our review of it um wherever you listen to our podcast but to do that and to keep it relevant long after the show finished mm. was it was phenomenal um but i have to go back to killer mike i have to go back to michael and that album um when i was listening to that album the weekend it came out was the same weekend we recorded our with cam thomas yeah um, for you know his account his then upcoming album red Shirt, which is here on merit mm-hmm. on quality on replayability mm-hmm. on story on growth on everything mm-hmm. on every conceivable metric cam thomas's album red Shirt deserves to be here yeah and it was the first time that weekend was when I was listening to it. And I remember I was listening to it on the coach down to London as we were getting ready to record. I came in, we were talking about what we were listening to. And I said to you guys, I just finished listening to Killer Mike's album for like the second or third time. You know, like, what do you think? I was like, it was one of the best first listening experiences of an album I'd ever had. Mm. And I said that then. That was what, June? July? That was July. June. It was June. It was June. June. So that was June. Larry June, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> I sit here now, January 2024, and to me, that album is the closest thing I've had to a hip hop album since Pusha T's Daytona. Mm. It is special on so many levels. Um, like you said, the roller coaster emotions he takes us through, whether it's summer, where he's talking about his summer love and the difficulties of being a teenager in a relationship, in Atlanta, in the South, at that time, with Jagged Edge singing in the background, whether it's motherless mm. and the secondhand remorse or the secondhand grief no. you feel when he's talking. Mm. And just the simplicity of my mother dead, mm. my grandmother dead. Mm. It's like, yo. Crazy. Crazy. Yo. Because in the background, sometimes I feel motherless mm. and he's just going and if you ever see his performance of that on jimmy fallon where he can't even make it through because he just starts crying it's mm-hmm. like oh my goodness or whether it's his ability to take on joe 3000 mm-hmm. and put him on a song with future mm-hmm. and completely throw nonsense to andre 3000's theory that i really want to make a rap album but what would i rap about at 48 <laughs> nigga i just heard you on scientists and edge is Shit, i just had you a couple of years ago on the Kanye album Man. so what are we talking about here i was grateful for the flutes don't get it twisted i understand i could hear that you really want to make a rap album but this was just a way to win me yeah. which is crazy is that in itself is a double because the flute is a wind Man. instrument Man. um but that being said what killer Mike did bring in the like i said before his ability to bring the Atlanta Avengers together, mm-hmm. whether it's um, CeeLo Green, yep. Andre 3000, yep. Future, yep. J.I.D., Young Moody, Jagged Edge, all these different Atlanta, Georgia artists, Young Thug on Run, yep. like bringing them all together to create that project. Special. And him still being the star. Mm-hmm. His story still being the star. Like it's titled Michael, it's an autobiography, Similar to Quaranta, the Danny Brown release earlier this year, which also could have been here. Mm-hmm. Um, it, 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 it really is a special album. Mm. It really is a special album. So delighted for him that he got Grammy nomination. Yep. Absolutely deserved. I hope he wins it. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't really hold the Grammys at that high esteem, it is still the creme de la creme of music awards. And mm-hmm. with that, 
I want the rap album that I believe deserves it to get that award. And the artist I believe that deserves it to get that award. Um, but genuinely, like, thank you to Killer Mike for sharing that side of his story, mm -hmm. for sharing that album. Um, it made my year. And that is the bar. Mm. That is the bar. Mm. When Benny drops in January, that's the bar. No. When Cardi drops, that's the bar. Mm. When Wes wants to come and drop, that's the bar. Mm. All these all these rappers, that is that's the new bar that you're chasing for me. That you're chasing for me. Yeah. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like for the past what five years? When did they tell them to come out? 2018. That's been the bar for me. That, mm -hmm. I think, that I've been holding rappers to of mm -hmm. what they're chasing. Now it's Killer Mike's Michael. Fair. Because I was going to say, if that's what the bare minimum you're accepting, you're going to start hating rap because I don't think a lot of artists. I've been hating rap, bro. <laughs> I've been hating rap, bro. They don't make it like they used to, bro. Mm, that, bro that's the problem. They don't make it like they used to. Sad. Sad, man. I've had 93 to infinity in so long. Mm. No one is ever going to make a bad rap album than while they made the album band, I think. Like that's really that was really the problem. It's it's so it's sad. Like have you heard Bloom? Bro, bro, did you people don't understand that he was so confident about what he was doing on that album that the album prior he said this is what I'm gonna the give to you, nigga. But <laughs> bro, <laughs> like I'm here to record the album. Oh, that's the next album, that's the album by nothing. You're here for the gift session. What? what? Like, like it's an Avenger, an early Is Avenger movie. Money? My God, man! Like, I got this egg to the top of this hill, and mm. then oh, shout out me. to Killer Mike. Shout out to all the rappers. And like, mm. like I said, I have my own personal feelings about hip hop in twenty twenty three. Step your fucking game up. Mm -hmm. Step your fucking game up. Facts. The best rap performance of twenty twenty three should not be Will Smith on the Grammy stage. Mm. Mm. Or Scarface in his tiny desk. There should be footnotes in what, what should be a, what should have been a great year like, in. Like, have you seen Scarface in his tiny desk? Yeah. Oh, I've seen, seen clips. I've seen, seen clips. clips. You seen that moment where he's listening to his own song mm. from <laughs> twenty years ago, man. and he nearly starts crying. He's like, "There's just something about good music, man." Man, what what album was songs in twenty twenty three from rap gave you that feel? <laughs> I was watching that shit. That's on my blog. We mm. reviewed that album this year. Man, man. That was your first time hearing that album? Yep, yep. So you don't even understand. Man, man that was a moment, you know. That was, was like, I was gassed. <laughs> man. Oh, let me stop hating. Let hey. me stop hating. 2024 is around the corner. It's around the corner. I'm sure it's going to be a great year. Yeah, you know I said. New year, new hip hop. Come on, man. <laughs> 51 years old this time. 51 years. <laughs> um. So now we get into songs of the year. Songs. 